Yeah, that's the pop-up right there. Okay. Hi, everyone. And thanks for joining us today for another class in our ongoing series featuring, featuring Blue Moon Studios UV resin craft for jewelry making. If you have missed our earlier classes, they're available on Michael's website where you can watch the videos, pick up on the basics along with our tips and tricks and learn how to use UV resin to make your own unique jewelry pieces. Today, we will be showing you how to create beautiful UV resin Christmas earrings. Everything you need for this project is available at Michael's stores nationwide, as well as on the Michael's website. Stephanie Manor, Blue Moon's creative director, will be your instructor, and she is so excited to share today's projects with you. Rosa Vergaro, who is off camera, is busy assisting Stephanie with what she needs so you can get the most out of today's class. And I am Anne-Marie Menlo, and I'll be answering your questions via the chat function. We hope you can craft along with us today, but if not, sit back, watch and enjoy, and pick up the materials needed to make your earrings at a later time. The video will be posted within a day or two to the Michaels website, so you can watch and refer to it. There is no handout for today's class. So without further ado, here's Stephanie to show you how to create your own UV resin Christmas holiday earrings. Thank you. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Hello, everyone. We are so excited. It is November. How did that happen? But we are in November, so it's time to start thinking about Christmas crafting. So we have a series of beautiful Christmas earrings that we're going to make together. But first, I always like to start by showing you a little bit about what this is. This is UV resin. And a lot of people are familiar with two-part resin. This is a little bit of a newer technology than two-part resin. It's just in one part. So it pours out of this bottle ready to use. There's no mixing. There's no measuring of parts. It makes it very easy to use. So I'm going to just bring this camera down a little bit here so you can kind of see. Um, we are going to switch to another camera in a minute um, so you can get top down and really see the action. But I just want to show you what this is. So like I said, this is UV resin. This is a UV light also sold in the same section at Michael's. So here I'm turning it on and off. And I have a silicone mat here and some wood sticks. Okay, so first I'm just going to put a dot of this out on a silicone mat just to show you. It just pours out ready to use. It's like a liquid goo at this point. The UV light, um, I just hit the button and it turns on for one minute it has an automatic timer it will turn off after one minute and this cures this liquid into a hard plastic so this opens up all sorts of crafting abilities for you to make your own custom plastic things um, and now this light has been on for about i don't know 15 seconds or so let's take a sneak peek here and you can see what was what was liquid before is now a hard piece of plastic and now this hasn't gone for the whole amount so let me put that back on the curing times when you're using this in a mold or a bezel is about two to four minutes that you'll have to put it under uv light the cool thing though, is that it also cures in sunlight. So if you have a sunny day outside, you can put it out in the sunlight and within about five minutes or so, you have a cured piece. So this will shut off automatically after one minute, but I just wanna show you that this is completely cured. So you have like a little, tiny little plastic cabochon there. Now, the other thing I wanna demonstrate, this is a glass of water. I'm gonna pour a little bit of UV resin onto this wood stick and show you that this is not um, drying. It is not drying in the air. It only cures in under UV light. So I wanna show you, I put this in the water. I'm gonna shine UV light on it. And to show you that in a complete airless environment, so underwater, this will also cure within a minute to a hard finish. Uh, so what this means, a couple things, first of all, you wanna make sure that your crafting area is not by a bright, sunny window because this stuff will start to cure as you're working with it. So just um, be careful about choosing your workspace. 
The second thing is you have time to work with this product. So you, it's not going to start hardening up on you. Um, so you have time to work with it, get your uh, fillers or glitters placed at the exact right spot. And it only hardens when you introduce the UV light. So we've left this out in our um, office for days and uh, under regular fluorescent lights and it stays in its liquid state until it's introduced to UV light. Okay, so that's been a little bit less than a minute, but I just want to show you that this, which was plastic, uh, which was, sorry, liquid is now hard plastic on there. So that's generally what UV resin is. And we're gonna show you how you can make beautiful Christmas jewelry with it. So we're gonna close this camera and I'm gonna to switch to the other camera and I'll be right back with you. All right, hi guys. Can you hear me over here all right? Yes. All right, so, wonderful. These are the earrings that we're gonna be making today. If you are crafting along with us, you're gonna be making this sort of modern wreath earring with us. That one we're saving to last. We're gonna do these other two first as kind of a warm up to show you just the basics of working with this material. So let me move this to the side. And we're gonna start with these earrings that look a lot like peppermints, right? There's the earring back. Well, guess what? They are peppermints. And I'm gonna show you that what we've done is just coated these in UV resin and then added this embellishment on the front and added this flat pad earring on the back for some really adorable stud earrings. Okay, so let me bring my silicone mat in here. And here we have some peppermints, just that you get at the grocery store. Um, I'm gonna open up some of these. Now you do want to choose two peppermints that, um, that look the same. These can look a little, I don't know, kind of misshapen. And uh, you can see on the front, let me get you a little bit closer here. Sometimes, you know, a little bit of extra red gets on the middle. So just find two that you like that look the same that are going to become your earrings. And simply, we're going to coat them in UV resin. So I'm going to put a dot here on top. Maybe a little bit more. And here I have a wood stick. And I just am going to try to get that resin all over it. So I'm going to let it drip over the sides just kind of work it around. Now I can tell you we have tried some different uh, candies and things. Um, we found recently today the gummy bears will not work. We have not exhaustively tried every candy in the world but um, this clear resin coating works on porous and non-porous surfaces. So I can't speak for every candy but um, it should work with the majority of them. So I'm just carefully kind of, if you um, had an old paintbrush, it would really work to kind of paint this on, but I'm trying to let it just dome over the top and kind of down the sides. And I'm gonna add a little bit more over here. You can see how easy this resin is to work with. Like I said, it's not two part resin. It is just pours out of the bottle ready to use. Um, and when I think that I have that about covered on the front side, uh, I have my UV lamp here, we bring it into the shot and turn it on. And we're gonna let that cure for about a minute. Okay, while that cures, let's talk about safety. Let me bring this up a little bit. Okay, so if you have sensitive skin, if you have an, obviously an allergy to resin, make sure you're wearing gloves with this product. Um, make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area. All those classic things when you're working with any type of like plasticizer or resin. Um, make sure if you get a little bit of the resin on your hands, just wipe it off before you introduce your hands under any UV light. You don't want it curing on your skin. Um, so what's happening right now 
under this UV light is it's turning hard plastic. And part of that um, chemical reaction that's happening lets off a little bit of heat. So when you, um, if you had some on your hand and then you put your hand under light, I don't want you to burn yourself. So just be very careful about that. Okay, so that light, you can see how it turned off automatically. And so that resin that we put on there is now hardened. Resin does not stick to silicone. So this silicone mat, um, you can see I can still move this freely. And I'm just gonna kind of flip this over and do the same thing and coat the other side. the other side and you can take your time at home and just make sure this is fully coated. Um, while I have it flipped over on the back I want to add here's let me take my example here's our sample. I want to add this earring finding and that looks like this. When you go to Michael's this is what those earring findings look like. And it allows you to turn any flat backed object into earrings. Let me take some of them out. So this is what they look like. And now before, this is liquid resin on the top of there. Before I cure it, I'm just going to place this in place. You can put it in the middle. You can put it more up to the top, which is what I think I'm going to do. And I'm going to add that with the UV resin. So here I'm using the resin as a glue. And I just wanna make sure that I have the resin on top of that finding, because remember this only cures under UV light. So any resin that's underneath this finding that is not gonna be um, in the light will not cure. It will remain liquid maybe forever. Okay, so I am just gonna cure that finding directly onto the back. All right, so while that is happening, I'm gonna show you the next step here. So we picked up these stickers from Michaels. They have a lot of wonderful stickers in their scrapbooking section. And stickers work so wonderfully with UV resin. And all we're gonna do once this is done curing is we're gonna stick that sticker on the front of it. And again, use the UV as an adhesive to hold this on there. And then we will get to our final piece that looks a little bit like this. Okay, so I will encourage you to use the chat function in this Zoom call. So on this call are the actual manufacturers of this product. And we want to hear from you. We wanna hear your questions. We wanna hear your comments. If you've used resin before, what, you, what you're using, um, resin for? What are you making? Please let us know. We love to hear comments directly from all of our makers out there. Okay, so this has gone for a minute. And now you can see I can pick it up by that metal piece. And it is securely on there. Now, if I was doing this at home, I would probably cure it for another kind of minute or two. It's still a little bit tacky, but I'm going to try to move things along here. So, um, and then I will stick this sticker onto the front and I'm not going to do this step because I'm just really demonstrating this for you. But then I would again, use the UV resin as an adhesive just to make sure that that's fully stuck on there and it's not going anywhere. Okay. And that is a very, very simple, very cute little peppermint earring. All right, we are just moving along here. I'm gonna switch this because this got a little dirty. Okay. All right, so now we're ready for this earring here. Next, we're gonna make these word earrings. And these are made using this, um, this silicone mold. So this mold is what we're gonna be using to make the rest of the earrings that I demonstrate to you. And this mold is special because it is exclusive to Michaels. You will not find this anywhere else but Michaels. 
Uh, you can see our name is on the bottom there. And you can see all of the wonderful earring shapes that this makes. We're gonna be using these two bars over here uh, to make these word earrings. And they start with these letter beads. So these are great for making custom words, custom phrases, people's names. Um, here we did, well, they're opposite, but it's Mary and Bright. So we have five letters and six letters here. Um, but this can fit up to nine letters in there if you have a long name like me. So let me show you how we do that. So first, uh, let me just talk for a minute about these silicone molds. This is a high quality silicone. You can tell that it's high quality because it's rigid and it's clear. The rigidity and the clarity of it are very important when you're dealing with UV resin. Um, and let me show you the difference. This is a low quality silicone mold. Do you see how floppy this is and how opaque it is? Um, this, this will work with UV resin, but you won't get great results because you'll get some surface texture and it just, it won't, um, it won't cure as easily as a completely clear piece because remember, you're curing it with the light. So parts of this where the light can't reach or can't reach easily are not gonna cure as easily. So that's the difference here. I'll shake both of them so you can see the difference in rigidity. Also, there are plenty of other silicone molds out there that are opaque, like this, this is a candy mold. Do not use this for UV resin. You always wanna be using a clear mold with UV resin because this just, it'll do funky things with the resin. It won't cure properly, it creates bubbles. Um, you do need to have a clear, clear mold. All right. So let's get started here. I have these letters set to the side here. Okay, so here, here is, oh, here, this makes it easier. All right, here are our letters. Now these letter beads are fit in this mold exactly you can see I put it in there and it's not moving it is stuck in there just perfectly but the thing you have to remember when you're working with them any molded product the front of your finished piece is back here this is the front this is the back of your piece so this M we need to turn it upside down so it looks funky from the front but from the back which is your front facing piece. It looks correct. So we're just gonna put, um, oh, sorry, I'm gonna start with a tiny little dab of resin straight from the bottle into the mold. And now I'm gonna start placing my letters, just making sure that my, from my front view, it's upside down. M. You know, letter beads right now are just so trendy. Um, letter bead um, earrings, necklaces, bracelets. I guarantee if you make some of these for a craft show, if you make some of these for your Christmas presents, you're gonna have some very happy folks on your Christmas list. Okay, so here you can see as I press this down into the mold, it kind of dispersed some of this resin up through it and that's okay. Now I'm just pressing it down and I'm gonna flip this over so you can see what it'll look like. There's our Mary. Okay, so now let me show you our example here. You can see that the top has red glitter. I'm gonna show you the sides. Now these are beads, so beads by nature have a hole that goes through them. So the sides of these aren't super pretty. If that bothers you, you can paint some resin on top of that and cover that. But I wanted to show you sort of the simple, easy way to do this. So let's put red on the top there. So adding tint to resin. There's a lot of different ways to add tint to resin. The simplest way is just by using the resin tints that come in this program. This is an example of what the tints look like at Michael's. So you just add a few drops of it in there. 
what we're going to be using to tint this is glitter. Yay, glitter. You can never have too much glitter, especially around Christmas time. Um, and I have a little silicone mixing cup here. This is also sold where the resin is sold. You get a mixing cup, you get the wood sticks to be able to custom mix tints. So let me pour some resin out and I'm trying to eyeball it. How much resin I'm gonna need to fill up this portion here. And then I'm gonna add some glitter. How much glitter? As much as you want. There can never be too much. So I'm gonna add quite a bit in there. And then I just mix it up. Okay, that looks mixed to me. And I always keep a paper towel kind of off camera so that I can do things like this, wipe that off, okay? All right, so this is very flexible. So it allows you to bend it so that you can um, direct this exactly where you want it to go. All right, so now I'm just going to carefully, because this is a very small, thin earring, just carefully place the red in there. And you just want to take extra care up here around this little tab. This tab is going to ensure that what you're making has a hole at the top of it so that you can connect it to other things. So you can connect it to your earring findings. And I just want to fill this up to the top. Okay, that looks good. Let me put this to the side. I'm going to wipe off my stick and I think we're ready to cure this. Uh, where's my light? Okay, so let me put this on here. Now I am going to let this go for um, at least two minutes. Whenever you add tint or you add glitter to resin, you do need to let it cure a little bit longer. And again, it's because the light has a harder time reaching all areas if there are particles blocking it. So you just want to give it a little bit of extra time to cure under there. If anyone has any questions, I would love to answer them now in the chat. Do we have any questions, Anne-Marie? Uh, yes, Stephanie, uh, a couple of questions. We'll start with one. Um, how do you dispose of the unused UV resin in your cup? Okay, so here we have our extra. Uh, well, usually I would use these to make a second earring, but I'm not going to demo that second earring for you. I think you get the idea. Um, uh, what I would do with this is I would make something else. I would pour this into another, you know, um, another compartment. See, now that went for a minute. I'm going to turn it on again. I would pour that into another compartment and make another pair of earrings. But at the end of the day, when you have a little bit of residue left in here, just you, the way I, the easiest way to clean it up, is just put it under the UV lamp and I'm gonna do that now. Instead of trying to take a wipey or something and wipe that out, the easiest way to clean up this stuff is if you harden it and then you can just pop it out and um, all your cleanup is done. So I'm gonna harden that little bit for, to show you how that works. I'm trying to keep both under the light at the same time. Um, so to talk a little bit about this light, this is a nine watt LED UV lamp. Uh, I'm going to show you the underside of it. You can see, oh, you can see there the three little LED lights that are creating the UV light for us. Um, this plugs into a USB cord. Uh, so you would plug this into a laptop or just however you plug in your cell phone, usually, this will plug into. And here is what that lamp looks like in stores. Okay, now this is gone for two minutes. And this is not completely softened, but you can, I mean, not softened, it's hardened. It's still a little bit soft, but you can see that it's mostly hardened. And just by kind of, here, I'm going to flip it out. Popping that out. 
So that's the easiest way to clean these. Okay, so let's move this to the side and pop out our earring. It's very satisfying to pop things out of molds, I gotta tell you. But this is what it looks like. Okay. And now it does have on the side, you can see the holes there, but um, we're not going to let that bother us today. If you have a little bit of extra um, resin on the side here that has, has hardened, I just, there's a couple ways to get rid of that. First of all, you can just kind of knock, knock off that extra bit with your fingernail, um, or you can go in with a nail file and kind of just file that off. But that is the basics of how to make a bar earring with words, custom words in it. Um, okay, now the last thing we have to do is turn this into jewelry, right? We have to connect it to other things. And to do that, you just need two parts. This is a jump ring and this is an ear wire, kind of very basic building blocks of jewelry. I'll show you how to connect them. Now remember, this already has a hole there. You can, there you can see the hole there. So I want to take my jump ring, find the break in the jump ring, which is right up at the top. I don't know if you can see that break too. I'm trying to really zoom you in. Um, a jump ring this big, uh, you really only need one tool to hold it. And I just use my fingers to open it. Here's an open jump ring. Notice that I opened it this way and not this way. This way will destroy your jump ring. This way will allow you to close it and it will still be in the same shape. Okay, so I use this jump ring to go through the hole. Before I close it, I add my ear wire. Add the ear wire and close it in the opposite direction in which you opened it. Here is closed. And boom. In just a few minutes, you have custom earrings. Now I wanted to show you other options because you are obviously going to put your own creative spin onto this craft. So I wanted to show you other ways of working with that mold. Here we've done glitter, but just ombre. So very concentrated down here and less so up toward the top. Here we put some pearls inside there. This gives you a very modern contemporary look. Here we put a piece of chain inside there. Here we put some candy sprinkles. We're just on a candy kick apparently today, but um, you can see how well they work in the resin, especially in this kind of ombre look. Let me line these all up here so we can see them all. Um, here we did some other pearls, some little larger ones. These are little micro beads, glass micro beads that we sprinkled in there while the resin was still wet. This one's probably my favorite though. These are seed beads. So you take some resin, put it in the mold, sprinkle your seed beads in, try to keep them in nice little stripes, and then you cure it. You cure them right in there. We always like to show you lots of options because the, crea the creative part is up to you. You can take the techniques that I'm showing you in this class and make a lot of different looks just depending on how you style it. Can we see the mold again? Yes, you can, Mrs. Fassier. Here's the mold. So this is the compartment that we've been using. You can see there's two of them. So you can easily make two earrings side by side. Now up at the top, is like an earring topper. I want to show you, do I have an earring made with that? Let's see, I have a whole bunch of samples over here to the side that you guys can't see. Um, I don't see one uh, for one made with this piece here. So this is like an earring topper. So you can imagine that you would add your stud earring to this, connect this to this and then have, uh, here we go. Here's an earring that uses that. So that was made with this compartment and this compartment, the teardrop. It's kind of, it's kind of hard to see this on camera, huh? I mean, maybe if I put the blue behind it, it's easier to see. 
There we go. Maybe that's a little bit better. Okay, so we're ready to move on. Let's go to the wreath earrings. So here's our wreath earring that we're gonna make. It's a very modern wreath because it's clear. And you can see it's got real greenery. These are real dried leaves embedded down into it and some gold flakes. Now you can decide what size you want your wreath. This one, our example, was made with this compartment. We have other examples I'll show you in a little bit that are made a little bit smaller. Okay, so let's get started. So for this wreath earring, if you're crafting along, please do so. Um, we're just gonna start by putting resin directly into the mold. Now, actually, the last time um, I used this, I got, I got red glitter everywhere on this mold. So I have a baby wipe here and I'm just gonna kind of like clean this up a little bit. Uh, baby wipes work really well to clean this, uh, warm soapy water. Uh, but what we found, what we like to use is just a piece of like scotch tape, um, a little piece of scotch tape to kind of like you're taking lint off of clothes, just kind of pick up any extra glitter left on there. But you do wanna start with a clean mold. Anything that's in that mold is gonna end up in your final piece. And we only want that to happen if it's intentional. Okay, take two. We are gonna start with some clear all the way around. And you can see I'm filling it maybe, I don't know, a third of the way. I'm gonna go in with my wood stick and just spread that out to make sure that it's covering the bottom. Okay, now we want to start thinking about our greenery. So let me show you what it looks like in stores. We have a huge assortment of dried and pressed flowers. This is a pressed flower assortment. It comes in different colors. This is like the ivory one. We've got it in blue. We've got a, every color that you, you want. Um, but you can see all the different flowers that come in here. You've got some daisies. These are lace flowers. And then you've got this branch of greenery. Let me show you what that looks like. Here it is. Like a little fern. So to use this, what I want to do is cut it apart. Let me move this off to the side a little bit here. And I'm just going to go in with a little pair of scissors and kind of along this main stem, I'm just going to trim those. All right, and save this for later. These are very delicate. I'll tell you, working with any dried flowers, you wanna be very careful. They are just by nature, very delicate. Okay, so I've got my greenery and now I wanna start placing it carefully inside the mold. The easiest way to do that is just dip the little tip of your wood stick into liquid resin and then use that to pick up a piece. And I can take all the time in the world to place this greenery exactly where I want it to go. Again, keeping in mind that the front of this earring is actually at the bottom of this mold. I ran out of, let me grab these from my stash over here. Okay. I'm not gonna put any on the very bottom because there's gonna be a bow there. You can put as much or as little as you want. I'm just gonna do that much. Next, we're gonna add some really cute gold flakes. Let me raise this up so I can show you. 
what this looks like. So in store, there are all sorts of glitters and confettis and fillers to um, put into your resin. So these are flakes. You can see it comes with copper, two different tones of gold. This is more of a yellow gold and this is more of kind of like an antique gold. I really like that you get two different colors of gold because depending on what color your findings are, you can match the golds. Let me show you another example. These are some other fillers, different confettis. And if you uh, want to have a lot of options, you want to look at buying this mega filler kit. Let me move this up. Okay, so this has little plastic containers, 16 different plastic containers of um, all sorts of flakes, chunky confettis, extra fine glitters. There's some polymer clay slices. There's some real flowers in here and also some metals, so, and pearls. Don't forget about your pearls. This is a great buy. Okay. So here we have our gold flakes. And so we pour a little bit of these out. And again, dip this in a little bit of liquid resin, just so you have a tacky, you can pick this up. And placing these where you want them to go. And again, you at home are gonna spend a lot of time making sure that these flakes are exactly where you want them. I'm kind of doing this quickly, but um, you can take your time and get these just perfect. All right, I like the way that looks. What I'm gonna do is pre-cure this. So I'm. it's still only filled about a third of the way with resin. I don't wanna fill it to the top with resin right now because this is all, these things are just floating in there. The minute I pour more resin, it's gonna disperse all of your careful work here. You don't want that. So um, let's put the light on over this and I'm going to let that cure for just about a minute. Okay. Anne-Marie, do we, while this is curing, can we take a question? There was a question earlier, Stephanie, that I don't know the answer to. Uh oh, <laughs> I'm scared. So I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> um, the question is, can this be used to make UV resin bottles? I'm not like water bottles. Have you heard of that? Well, I've heard of people using resin to decorate the outside of bottles um, or um, cups if that's what they're referring to. Yeah, it can definitely be used for that. I've never done it that way, um, but I see no reason why not. It's not a food safe product, but if it's on the outside of a cup, I don't, I don't see the problem with that. Okay, so that went for one minute. The auto light turned off. Let me move this to the side. And um, I'm not gonna pop that out. First, I need to just fill it to the top. And now I can do that without disturbing any of those flakes and leaves that I've carefully put in there. All right, so you just wanna kind of, it's hard to see on camera, but you wanna just bring the resin level up to the top of the mold. And then I let, while it's still wet, I like to kind of go around the side with my wood stick, just making sure that there's no puckers in the resin, there's no bubbles. You can see that it's not a product that bubbles a lot. That is a real problem with two-part resin. It's just, you don't get a lot of bubbles. If the most, you, you might get an air bubble in there. Um, and if you do, you can kind of pop that with your wood stick or just scoop out the air bubble. Uh, can you use two-part resin in the same mold? I think that was your question. 
I can only see a part of the question here. Yeah, you can use these silicone molds for a lot of different types of resins. They, uh, they're, they're useful for two-part resin as well. Okay, sorry, that's done. Let's put this under the light and let that cure. How many colors can you tint it? You can tint it every color of the rainbow, Bonnie, any color that you want. Our tints come in only six colors. So we've got, bring this up. We've got, these are kind of like the primary colors. And we also have this like black, white, red. So you can mix these tints together to get your secondary colors. Um, so yeah, the sky's the limit in terms of tinting it. The only thing I would caution is you do not want to tint it a completely opaque color. Uh, you will have, it, it might, may not cure. If the light cannot penetrate into this, it may not cure. So be careful when you're using black or even white um, with these. Use, if you want a, an opaque look, make sure that you're using a very thin layer of it and that will ensure that it cures. Okay, so that went for one minute. And uh, we can pop this out. Now, this is slightly warm. The mold is slightly warm. And that's from that chemical reaction I told you about earlier. And because it's warm, actually, the resin is still slightly pliable when it's warm. So I'm just going to let that kind of cool down for a minute. And gently pop this out of the mold. And there's our piece. If you have any rough edges on the back, what you can do is take more resin and kind of fill this in and then cure it again. Or you can, like I said, you can um, kind of scrape those rough edges off with a, a um, nail file. Let's turn this over to the right side. And let's look at our example. So here's our example earring. So what we have to do last is attach the hardware and attach the bow. So this bow is just made of kind of your standard ribbon. Um, this ribbon is uh, a quarter inch. What we're gonna use is an eighth of an inch. It really is just up to you what you like if you want kind of a chunkier ribbon look. Um, and just tie this in a bow like this. I'm not gonna demonstrate that part for you, but you can see, just tie it in a little bow. And we want to stick this on so it sticks here. You can use UV resin as an adhesive, but let me show you what happens when you use it with fabric like ribbon. Can you see how it's like kind of made a watermark onto the fabric? I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but it kind of darkens it a little bit. And that's, it's like a watermark that it leaves on fabric. So I think in this case, the better adhesive to use would be a tiny little bit of, of hot glue, a tiny little bit of super glue. Um, any, you know, you're doing a plastic to fabric connection. So uh, you don't need a super heavy duty glue to do that. Um, but I am gonna show you just for demonstration sake, if you wanted to use the UV resin, what that would look like. So I'm just gonna put a tiny little dot there, place this ribbon and to cure it, I'm actually gonna turn it upside down and cure it from the back. Can you put ribbon in the mold? Yes, you absolutely can. You will get this kind of watermark effect, um, but if the whole ribbon is watermarked like this, it'll just look like a little uh, darker color. All right, so that is curing from the back and then I'll show you from the front what that looks like. Let me get another jump ring and an earring wire prepped. So here's our earring wire. And here's a jump ring. All right, so let me take my pliers and my jump ring, 
find the top of the jump ring. Every jump ring has a split in it. And just bring one hand toward you and one hand away from you to open that up. And look at that perfect timing. Attach this. Attach this. And then take your jump ring and close it. So I want to show you up close on that bow. See what I mean by watermark? How it kind of just darkened it a little bit here. I mean, you can barely see it, but um, if you want to avoid that watermark, use another adhesive just to glue that on there. But I think it works well with the UV resin. And that is on there. I'm like poking at this. It's on there for good. And then you have a beautiful contemporary wreath earring. And like we did for those bars, I'm gonna show you options just from styling this, the different options that you can get. So here's our first one. Um, okay, here's one that we did in the smaller mold. So this is the smaller. And we also, we put some, a few little pearls in there and we also use a darker tint on the back because we wanted this one to be, it's not black, but you can see, you can still see my finger through it. Um, it's more of like a gray and we use a kind of a burgundy ribbon that we tied in a different way, but it just gives you a different look. Here we use again, the smaller wreath uh, mold and we use some blue iridescent flakes in there. And then instead of using a fabric ribbon, we just use a metal charm that we just stuck to the front of that with some UV resin. Okay, those are the only options I have of that one to show you. But you can see obviously different styles. The charms. Um, yes, this bow is available at Michael's. It is not part of the UV resin craft um, program, but it is part of the Christmas jewelry program that has every charm and pendant for Christmas you could ever, ever imagine. But yes, that is available right now in stores. Okay, and there's our wreath. And that leaves us with a little time here. Uh, to show you some other things that we have made, just a little show and tell, and um, answer any questions. So if you have a question, put it in the chat. I'm trying to look to see as these come through so that I can answer them. But I wanna show you some other options here. So here we've done in a metal bezel. This is called a bezel, all right? It's just a, it's just a metal frame. So instead of putting in a mold, we put it in a bezel. And here we did a dark tinted background. I really like the way that flowers look with a dark tinted background. It just really makes them pop. Here's another flower, just a simple little charm with a pink background. So you can do a contrasting background too. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Here we have a flower that we encased in clear resin. And then on the back to get that pink detail, that's just nail polish, regular old nail polish. We just swipe, swipe really quick on the back. But look, it looks like an artistic piece here. Um, here's a piece that we use using the same mold that we um, made these wreaths from, but we painted inside. This is a little bit of an advanced technique, but I wanted to show you that you can um, layer paint, stickers, marker in between your layers of resin, and that makes it permanent. Here's, we did another wreath where we did kind of like a half gold, half white. We put the word peace here. Could you put a petal from your wedding bouquet, I think is your question. Absolutely, we did a, we did a class on that last month where um, you can make a, like a keepsake. Um, do I have a sample of that? Mm, kind of, here, let me show you this one. So this is my mom and dad at their wedding. 
and we made this like shaker necklace from it. And if I had part of her wedding bouquet, I could have, you know, put those down inside the rev the resin and kind of decorated it like that. Um, okay. Any questions that came through? I haven't seen. Stephanie, How'd you get that tiny pit? Okay, yes. Um, there's a question about when we did the paper resin, uh, you know, um, using paper with the mm -hmm. UV resin. And they're asking for the handout. Did we have a handout for that one? I wasn't 100% sure. We do have that handout. Okay. If you get an email address, we can send that out to you. Okay. So for everyone that's on here, we apparently are not able to receive your email address as it's probably a security thing. I am going to put my email address down. So please feel free to reach out to me and I will make sure you get the handout. So here we go with my email address. This is another piece showing paper layered in between two layers of resin. So this is a metal frame that we first put a thin layer of resin and then the silhouette of a boy that was just paper. We printed it out on our office printer um, and then cut out, cut it out very carefully and just layered that in between two layers of resin. Do you have to coat the photos? Um, I can show you. These aren't labeled, but. Um, so you'll see if you go on YouTube, uh, you will see different ways of preparing photos for using them in resin. Um, and they will tell you, you have to coat them with Mod Podge or some type of a clear glue. You have to use plastic. This one is coated with Mod Podge before we put it into the resin. This one is not. I can't see, I mean, you can see a tiny bit of a difference this red coat looks a little bit brighter but you know it's it's not that much of a difference all this is is a picture that we shrunk down to size printed through a regular printer and cut out this is not prepared in any certain way but that is how you use resin with printed objects okay thank you um okay so still taking questions What's the mold you are using for the squares? Where? Mm, okay, it's here. It's always hard to see these clear things unless it's on blue. This mold was used for the square. In fact, this exact one also available at Michael's. This is kind of like our basic shapes mold. This is a cube. This is a rectangle and this is a reverse box, uh, which makes something like this shape. See how there's space in there. And then I can fill what I want in the space. And sometimes what I wanna fill in that space are things that I can shake around. Okay, this was from a previous sh class where we made these shaker charms. Here's another example of shaker charms. We made a little keychain. Okay. All right. So before everyone goes, we're still taking questions, but before everyone goes, I want to preview. This is the next project that we're going to work on in our class that's coming up in two weeks from today, November 18th, Wednesday, same time, same place. We're making these gorgeous snow globes that actually snow. Let me shake this one up. Oh, come on, it's stuck there at the bottom. But you can see the glitter floating around in there. This is the little mini version and we are gonna be making this. So please sign up for that class. It should be up on michaels.com right now, two weeks from today. We are gonna make these gorgeous little tiny snow globes. All right, well, thank you. As of before you go, don't go yet. Before you go, 
please, if you make something, post it to social media. I would love to see what you are making. It's so fun for me to put this out into the world and see what you guys do with it with your creativity. Do use hashtag UV Resin Craft. I check this hashtag on Instagram and on Facebook to see if anyone's posted anything from my classes. But hashtag UV Resin Craft um, is the hashtag you should use. Also, hashtag make it with Michaels. That is the kind of standard hashtag that Michaels uses for anything that you make um, with products bought at their stores. But definitely use these hashtags so that I can find your creations, comment on them. I love to see them. Okay, any last questions before we go? I'm headed to Michaels. Thank you, Gloria. Don't speed. If I was to coat the outside of a water bottle, would I need to cure each side? Yeah, unless you have like one of those spinny type um, things, you know, you are going to have to, to cure each side. I've never tried to do that. It might be a little bit difficult um, to get a, an even coating. Um, but yeah, you would have to kind of cure it as you go. What mold for the snow globe? Okay, the snow globe, we're gonna be making that mold with this ring mold. So this makes rings like for your fingers. And I don't know if you can see on here, but it makes ring sizes four through nine. And we just kind of repurposed this by adding this glass snow globe. Well, it's not a snow globe, it's a glass bottle. And between these two things, we are gonna create our snow globes here. Do you have to cure it with the UV light or do you have to do other stuff? You need to cure it with UV light. Unless you introduce UV light to it, it will stay in its liquid form. So the UV light can come from our lamp, which you know, if you're crafting at night, if you're crafting when it's raining, you're going to need a UV lamp to, um, to harden it. Or you can just craft it in sunlight. So we, I live in California, so we've got sunlight year round. And I just put it out on a sunny windowsill or outside on a little tray. And, um, and that cures it within just a few minutes. My preferred method of curing is actually in the sunlight. I feel like at least with this, this, these California rays, you get just a deep, pure cure that doesn't leave any surface tackiness or any problems. And um, I love using the sunlight for that. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to use the hashtag UV Resin Craft for all of your creations. Thank you so much for joining us and please join us again in two weeks.